This is a recording of Experiment 1 Basic Techniques using a one milliliter pipette. And I'm going to take you through how to do this experiment from beginning to end. Uh, I've got my scale, but let me move that out for a second. I've got the handout portion of it, and it's actually just the first uh, eight pages all together. And then I've got pages 9 and 10 with my data tables stapled separately because I want to make sure that I can see what I'm doing and uh, write things down uh, both at the same time. I've got my favorite color pen, green. I've got uh, a list of all the things that I need to use here, uh, a one milliliter plastic pipette. And oh, there we go. One milliliter plastic pipettes look like this. I've got 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. And mine has writing on both sides, but I'm going to be using the, the permanent side, not the written side, the, the sort of embossed one. Let's see, a 100 milliliter beaker, 100 milliliters, um, 250 milliliter beaker, right there. A beaker bigger than 400 milliliters. Mine's 500 milliliters, and it's already got my water, which I've already had sitting out here for 15 plus minutes. And a big and a waste beaker, and mine's just a big waste beaker. Uh, distilled water, I already showed you that. Scale that holds up to 200 grams with 0.01 gram accuracy. Uh, this is the 220. Uh, I don't know if you can see that number there. And then it does go to the 0.01 gram. Perfect. And a temperature probe. And my temperature probe looks like this. Yours may look the same or different. In order to use mine, I have to press the on button, and then I have to press the mode button twice in order to get temperature to display. So um, you uh, should be able to do something similar. Sometimes on some of these models, the temperature just comes right up. Other times you have to press a couple buttons. And then I just press and held the on off button to make it turn off. So now it's back off again. So that's all the materials that I need. So uh, basic techniques is a lab in which we look at three different pieces of glassware uh, or plasticware in this case, and we evaluate their accuracy and precision. Accuracy, and it all says this in gory, gory detail in the introduction to this lab. Accuracy is the difference between, or accuracy is how close a measured value or an average value of several measurements is to the correct or accepted value. And for accuracy, the calculation that you need to do is percent error. Precision is the uh, reproducibility or repeatability of the, do, of the same measurement done three or more times. And the uh, calculation for that is the standard deviation. And we're gonna be doing uh, both of those. And we're gonna do, being, do both of those for the pipette, the graduated cylinder, and the beaker. And I forget which beaker it says. Maybe the 250 milliliter beaker, or maybe, well, we'll figure that out when I get there. I've got all these beakers here. Okay, so um, yes, so that's, I've got all my materials, and I've read over the introduction um, personally. Uh, you'll notice that the introduction has uh, the percent error calculation built right into it, an example of how to do it, how and what it means, and then the standard deviation, an example as well. Um, including how to do significant figures. There's also a number of videos that you can use to help you do this. And uh, the one thing I will point out is that uh, we are going to be delivering one milliliter using the pipette. And one of the example videos is when the uh, plastic pipettes were uh, three milliliter pipettes and we had them deliver two milliliters. So um, small differences there. Let's go ahead and uh, get to the actual procedure. Well, one other thing to point out is there's a big table of density values for the density value of water. We will be calculating the density of water and comparing it to these values. And you'll have to know what your temperature is. And we'll get to that part, but let's say your temperature was 19.3 degrees Celsius. Then you would read the 19 go over to the 0.3, and at 19.3, this would be your density of water. 
density of water at that temperature is 0 0.998345, and we might refer to that as the density of H2O equals 0 0.998345 grams per milliliter. Everything has units. Um, good, and then right under that is the procedure. You'll work independently on this lab, no lab partners, since you're doing it at home, I guess that's true. Um, using a one milliliter plastic pipette to measure volume. And uh, so the thing that I find is the most helpful is to just read over it, follow the directions, we'll do that together. Fill about 400 milliliters of distilled water into a clean beaker and let it equilibrate to room temperature. Equilibrate means to wait until something has stopped changing uh, and to change temperature when it reaches room temperature. And um, once the, uh, this will take at least 15 minutes before, um, before starting to take temperature measurements, so set this water aside. This process can be viewed in the video. Yep and uh, in the camp common lab procedures. My water, as I was getting set up to make this video, has been sitting there for at least 15 minutes. So I'm good to go in that regard. Next step, record the mass of a clean 250 milliliter beaker. To record the mass, make sure that the outside of the beaker and the scale are both dry, very important. Uh, with the scale empty, set the scale to zero. So here's my scale. Um, and uh, with scale empty, set the scale to zero, good. Place the beaker onto the scale and record all the numbers displayed by the scale. It's a 250 milliliter beaker, so I've got my 250 milliliter beaker. I'm gonna place it on there and it says 24.71 grams. I'm gonna write that right here under mass of beaker trial one. 24.7170. Now 24.71, and I'm going to put my units here. If I put G for grams here, that means that anything across here is going to have the same set of units. My temperature of my water. If your scale goes from 24.71 to 24.70, that's okay. If it stays at 24.70, you can single cross out your number and then write the new number. Um, but these scales are only accurate to um, plus or minus about 0 0.04 grams. So it's in this last decimal place that there's some uncertainty. So let's see. So that's good. And oh, we need to take a picture. My camera's actually recording right now, so I'm not going to take a picture. Notice that your scale goes off over time, uh, especially if it's not plugged in. Oh, here's the other thing I was going to say. If it's fluctuating more than 0 .00, uh, 0 0.02 or 0 0.03, it's probably a good idea to plug it in and let the battery recharge because we have found that sometimes that's what happens uh, if it's low battery. And it doesn't always say that on the scale. All right, so I've got that. Um, record the mass. Take a picture of the scale showing the mass. Please do that. And you'll see it says need picture where in this little box here, in green, if you print it out in color on your screen, um, 24.71 grams. And you can put the G there too, if you prefer. All right, so actually I'm gonna take this and do it again. I'm gonna take my scale, put it right on there. Good, 24.71. You'll notice that every time I, I put something on the scale, or before I put it on, I let the little dot appear. That means your scale itself is ready. And then I wait for the dot appear to appear before I write down the measurement. Oh, you can't see the dot, can you? Hmm, now you can see the dot, but now it's a 24.71. 24.70, is it gonna stay? Right. All right, so over here, I'm going to single cross out and write 24.70 grams right above it. Then we single cross out so that you can still see the results afterwards um, in case there's a mistake and you need that value again. You never obliterate or destroy or erase. And we're always writing our results in ink. All right, so and I'm going to keep my scale right there so that I don't move it. That's another good idea is set your scale in one place, because if you move it, um, it can lead to small changes. 
All right, take a picture. I told you to do that. Record the temperature of the 400 milliliters of water. Here's my water. I've got my temperature. I'm going to take this black piece off to reveal the actual temperature probe that's underneath there. And then I'm going to stick this into the water. When I stick it into the water, I'm only going to stick it into uh, about right there. That's as far as it can go into the, well, let's see. Yeah, that's about as far. Actually, it can go into the full cap height. And then I'm going to swirl it. And then I'm going to record the temperature. Oop, I got to get the temperature mode. And my temperature, I'll show it to you first. 19.5 degrees Celsius. I'm going to write that down. I've got a little napkin, a cloth napkin here, paper. Um, so I'm going to write that, take that away, turn it off. And I've got uh, 19.5 degrees Celsius. Record the temperature, good. Condition the pipette with distilled water. So what that looks like is I've got my pipette, I've got my waste beaker. I, I, I am gonna move my scale a little bit out of the way. I think it's been shown to be pretty reproducible. So I've got my pipette here. I'm going to condition it, which means rinse the pipette three times with distilled water. Oh, I should say, this is just tap water, by the way, and tap water is okay to use. Distilled water would be better, and especially if you're gonna do reactions. Condition the pipette. Um, okay, so here's what you do. So I'm gonna suck up uh, just up to about there with water. You can do more, but that's all you need. I did a little more. Um, and then you're going to invert it and then watch that water go all the way down. Mm. Oh, it's not going down. Give it a little shake. Yeah, then the water goes down. You're rinsing out the entire inside. I don't know if you can see that there's water down in the bulb. I'm rinsing it around. And then I'm squirting it out into my waist until there's nothing left in there. You can, might take five or six squeezes. Then I'm going to do it again. I'm not used to these one milliliter pipettes. I'm used to the three milliliters. But let's see, I got. Yeah. So, one thing is, you only ever pick up water out of this. If you squeeze any water back, it has to go into your waste. And with one milliliter and just water, I'm actually just going to suck it up into the bulb. If you had a solution that you were trying not to waste, you wouldn't want to put all that into the bulb. All right, so I just did that three times, and that's conditioning. Anytime it says conditioning in any of these labs, that means take whatever you have, be it a pipette, be it a beaker, be it a graduated cylinder, you're going to rinse it three times with whatever fluid you're going to put into it. That's conditioning. Next. Deliver one milliliter of the equilibrated water using the pipette into the pre-weighed beaker. Now this is the part you have to be really careful about. So I've got my scale right here. The scale got a little water on it. So I'm gonna wash that off or wipe that off. Now I've got the beaker that I'm gonna be putting it in, which is my 250 milliliter beaker. Make sure you get the right one. And I'm going to fill my pipette up to the one milliliter line. And the one milliliter line is right there on these. And it says one right above it. And I'm going to suck it up to right there. And my favorite new way to do this, by the way, is to squeeze it out. Oop, I got an air bubble. So put it underneath the water, squeeze it. Watch how high it rises up. It's not at one. Squeeze it out, do some more air bubbles. Up, now I'm too high. Maybe this technique isn't gonna work. All right, so now I'm just holding it exactly at one on the line and I'm going over and I'm putting it right in there. I guess my technique is squeeze it, suck it so it comes right up there while I'm still holding it right at that 1.00 level. And then put it on your scale 
Turn it on first. Put it on your scale. And I get 25.63. And these are going to be grams as well. And you'll notice we're going to do some more trials. but And you need a picture of this, so please take a picture of your scale with the water, with the beaker, and showing the measurements for your uh, lab report. Let's see, record the volume. The record, oh, I recorded the volume for you. It's one milliliter because you put it right on the one milliliter line. Um, do, 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 do. There's a video, except it's two milliliters and you have this video. Um, there is an example picture in the lab that shows you where you're filling it to. Take a picture, that's number seven. Record the mass of the flask in the water in table one. That's the 25.63 grams. So reading right along, repeat the measurement multiple times to determine precision. Repeat step five, deliver, and step seven, record mass. Oop, that'll be step six when I rewrite this. Step six, deliver, and step seven, and step eight, record mass. Two more times without emptying your beaker between, between trials. All right, so here's what that is. My scale already turned off, but now I'm gonna suck it up to one in the pipette, that line, just as closely as I can, and then run it right on that line. And this is the thing you wanna be really careful about because you wanna get good precision, good repeatability. When you're finished with your pipette, you can just put it in the water. Then I'm gonna put it on the scale, wait for the dot to appear, Put the beaker on the scale, 26.53 grams. I can't help myself, I have to write it sometimes. All right, and then might as well turn it off. You could leave it on though. So now let's do it again. Air bubble, careful of air bubbles. Yeah, right there. Turn it on, oop, I got a little water on my scale, so let's move that. Get my dot back, put it on the scale. 27.44 grams, I don't need it. And those are all the uh, measurements, calculations, and pictures you have to do for this table. Let's go ahead and work through the calculations together. And to do that, uh, I need to get my calculator. So I will be right back.